Hi, I'm Penn, and this is my partner, Teller. We're Penn and Teller, and this is a show about theater. But we're on television. We made an elephant appear, a cheap uh, television trick. But we've got something better. Watch this. See a magic trick? Come over here. Let's do a magic trick. Come here. Anybody want to see a magic trick? Come on, gather around. He's gonna do a magic trick here. Just gather right in here. Come on, get right in here, right in the front here. Come on, everybody come around. I'm gonna do a little magic trick for you here in the rain. Come on, come on in here. Okay? Okay, kids, I'm gonna show you something. Look at our hands, everybody. Hands are empty. Okay. Watch this closely. Okay. Okay. Now, kid, reach in there. Make sure there's nothing there. Duh! Just kidding. <laughs> reach in there. Make sure there's nothing there. Anything in there? No. Nothing in there? No. Just reach, let's get something. Reach in there, would you mean? Nothing in there? No. Reach in there, would you please, sir? Just reach in there. Anything in there? Nothing. Okay, okay, now watch this. Watch closely. Watch closely. <laughs> now, this feels like it's live. But imagine you were right here. Imagine you were this guy, and we were doing it right in your face. That's live theater. We're going to meet a director, Julie Taymor, who started doing shows in her backyard when she was a kid, and now she's directing The Tempest by William Shakespeare. All of the arts combined. The theater is music, it's dance, it's acting, it's visual painting, it's sculpture, it's lighting, it's space. Therefore, all of those particular things become the play. For, for a moment, and then uh, Valerie will give some huge crack of lightning and thunder. The sail, the sail will release, and as it as the thing releases, the light he, goes out, and he, he exits. exits. He, he exits when the sail exits, and what is left there is this ship is the ship burning, just the thing. A director the directs, that's meaning the channels no, the ideas. It. You've got. Designers and actors, okay. producers, sound people, music people. You've got okay. a whole so troop of people that you have to organize. You also have a play that can be interpreted and told in many ways, especially when you're dealing with a, with a classical play like The Tempest, Shakespeare. It's been done many times. Your job as a director is to decide how are we going to not only visualize these incredible scenes that are in it, but what are these characters really like? This guy's name is Prospero. He used to be a duke. But 12 years ago, his brother cheated him out of his dukedom and put him out to sea in a small boat to die. Instead, he ended up on this island. He learned how to be a magician here, and this is his magic stick. As the play begins, Prospero is using his magic to stir up a huge storm. He wants to wreck his brother's ship on the island so he can finally get revenge. Now, Prospero, his dukedom was taken away from him. But then he's on this island, and he's doing the same thing to two inhabitants of the island. 
the spirit Ariel, who he says he saved, but now in saving Ariel, he has, impris has made her his own slave. Approach my Ariel, come. All hail, great master. Grave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, task Ariel and all his qualities. Task Ariel and all his qualities. Ariel is described as a spirit. And I, I kept wondering, well, how do you really get to the essence of spirit? Waves tremble. And I thought, of what if just the other hand, that the puppet head and the human hand and how it related to each other would give so much that all of the expression would be in this moving hand. It could be defiant in relationship. It could be frightened. It could be scared that this, with this face, could express all of that human emotion that this spirit has, and yet it's not a human. What is thou canst demand? My liberty! Before the time be out, no more. Oh, I prithee, remember, I have done thee worthy service. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost. I do not, sir. Thou liest. So it's, it's almost more moving and more touching and will, will affect the audience more that it's this little piece of nothing, you know? It's, it's just scholastic, it's like paper mache that it absolutely is nothing more than an object that is brought to life by an actress's talent, by her ability to manipulate it, and that it has so much humanity through the movement. To me, and it, this is sort of the essence of theater. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spriting gently. Do so. Using his magic, Prospero makes Ariel invisible and sends her off to spy on the men who are now shipwrecked on the island. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go. Make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine. Invisible to every eyeball else. Shakespeare is very attractive to me because it, it is so large. You've got spirits of the air and monsters of the earth. Um, you've got murders being plotted. It's huge. I mean, one of the beauties of Shakespeare is that he wasn't afraid to write enormous stories. He didn't have film and television, so the big stories had to be done on the stage. And the artists always, through, through the centuries, had to find a way to approach how do you do that technically. You work with, with the designer on, on the costumes and with the designer on the sets, and that happens very early. And this production, um, Skip did the sets and the costumes with a lot of collaboration. I mean, we've worked together on six or seven productions. You have to use all the means you can through your imagination to create the illusion of being somewhere where we obviously aren't, and the audience is going to accept it. In The Tempest, Prospero was on an island. So when I thought about, okay, it's an island, now what is, what is the essence of an island? It's sand. Sand in isolation. Julie had a very strong idea about the island having a lot to do with sand. We didn't know quite how to shape that or what shape that would take. I realized that I needed the sand to angle back. So what I needed to do was create distance underneath the stage that somebody could crawl through the sand which is how Caliban makes his first entrance. As wicked do as e'er my mother brushed with raven's feather. Caliban the is the oh, resident the inhabitant of the island that Prospero comes to. He is the king of the island. He represents the island. And in the first scene, Caliban comes through the earth. He comes from below. Where Ariel comes from the air, Caliban comes through the earth. 
I'm forth, I say. There's other business for thee. Okay, stop. In the beginning, when Prospero is saying, what ho, Caliban, he doesn't know where Caliban is. He's somewhere in the earth. So as far as you're, he could pop up right in front of you. He could be under your feet. So you always will sort of hide and stay behind him, okay? All right, so. Um, what ho, slave? Yes, what ho, slave? What ho, slave, Caliban. Before Prospero came, Caliban ruled this island. But Prospero got angry with Caliban and used his magic powers to make him his slave. Come thou tortoise, when? Come thou tortoise, when? Boing! Caliban is one of the few characters who's actually described in Shakespeare's play. And he's described as a deformed, savage monster, basically. Drop on you both! And I took a very unusual tack with, with my interpretation of Caliban. I thought that I took the line in the play where Caliban says, here I am stymied, you have stymied me in this hard rock. And I am, I am really meaning I am to, to be stymied is to be stuck, to be imprisoned. And here you stymie me in this hard rock while you do keep from me the rest of the island. So I thought, well, very, this is a very simplistic idea. What if I put Caliban in a rock? So I, I thought, well, I had been looking at pictures, and I'd seen these, these incredible photographs of the mud men of New Guinea. And I looked, and on their head were these, what were clay masks, they were rocks. And what you have in this rock is two eyes and a hole for the mouth and two holes for the ears. And that's it. It's about the most primitive of masks you could possibly have. And here, you tie me in this hard rock while you do keep from me the rest of the isle. Thou most lying slave. It's probably much harder to read Shakespeare than to see Shakespeare. You don't have to understand every word to understand what a person is talking about. For instance, you have Caliban saying, um, you taught me about the bigger light. What is the bigger light? What is the bigger light? Is it a light bulb? What is it? Well, in fact, the bigger light is the sun. And, it, and what Caliban has done is he's, he's really described the sun of what it is. It's the big, big light up there. So in a way, Shakespeare is more simple than we are. What is the sun? The sun is the bigger light. Now, the audience will, won't know that unless they see, p potentially, the actor gesturing and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee. What I'd like to do right now um, is for Reggie and Kelly to play a little bit. Let's work with the masks a little bit. And then we'll get into the scene, OK? Trinculo no, 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 is the court jester. He works for Prospero's brother. His partner is Stefano, the butler. These two guys are the clowns. And what I wanted to do with these two actors was I wanted to create a larger-than-life mask for their face. With uh, Trinculo, he somehow was a little rodent-like, and his nose was kind of like leading him along and sniffing out the situation, and his teeth, his buck teeth, were a little bit like a rat. So I, I took life casts off the actors' faces, and I sculpted these so that these could fit and that they would be able to talk, and that the nose, this is when they start to learn how to work with these, they find what is the feature that is the predominant feature which will lead them in movement. That's fabulous. How about your tongue? <laughs> That's wonderful. Like, especially when you're panting for the wine. You're thirsty. Oh. That's a beautiful, really, put your, pull it, there, that overbite. Stefano. any weather at all and another storm brewing 
a lot of what the character is is how they're dressed. The costumes say everything about the character because you're not going to have a lot of costume changes. It's not like they're going to wear a different outfit for the morning and a different outfit for the evening. Yeah, I mean, I think it should look like he went through this incredible hurricane and half his clothes just blew right off of him. I mean, I love the. Oh, I love the idea through. of an arm being ripped off. This. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. The same cloud cannot choose but fall by pailfuls! What have we here? In this scene, Trinculo stumbles over Caliban, who's hiding. Caliban doesn't know about the shipwreck, and he thinks Trinculo is one of Prospero's evil spirits who's come to pester him. way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no other shelter hereabout. <laughs> Misery equates a man with strange bedfellows. Oh, I shall no more to see, to see here shall I die a sore. Oh. I'll bring thee with drafts to the second time we see Caliban, he's met up with Trinculo and Stefano, who are both drunk. These three are about to stir up a lot of trouble. All of a sudden, Caliban is seduced into thinking that these are going to be his liberators. Ah! I pray thee, now lead the way without any more talking. And these fools, who are also thinking of taking over, of getting power, they decide to get Caliban to help to help them take over the island. Oh. <laughs> and at the end of that scene, he takes the logs that he's been carrying for, for Prospero, which are the symbol of his enslavement, and he actually takes one of the logs and he breaks open his head. for Caliban because he's going to get back at Prospero. Well, this is great. He's now got these two guys and they're they're going to murder Prospero and that'll free Caliban forever. Freedom! Freedom! Hide it! Hide it! Freedom! Oh, great monster! Lead the way! Very pronounced oh, you just thing. slide in. If I just kind of glide. Yeah, in that'll over. be nice. And then thou liest. Right. Yeah, that's great. Thou liest. Thou canst not. What a bad thing is this? Remember, thou Prospero thou has made Ariel invisible. These guys can hear her, but they can't what see her. Did I? I did nothing. I'll stand farther off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou <laughs> Do I? Yes, that's right. right. Take this yes. and that. Give me the lie uh, another, another time. time. Give me the lie another time. <laughs> I did not give the lie. What are your wits and hearing to? A box on your bottle and the devil take your finger. <laughs> and then Caliban, you're here and you're laughing at that, right? You love that he's laughing. And then you say, make him go. Further. Yeah. Uh, Pretty now, stand further off. <laughs> Come, proceed. Why, as I told thee, it is a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There. As Ariel listens in, Caliban and Stefano plot to murder Prospero. Or, with the luck, batter his skull. Or, Punch him with a steak, or cut his weasand with thy knife. Oh, 
monster, mm -hmm. I will kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen, and Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. <sighs> Dost thou not like the plot, Trinculo? Mm -hmm. mm, excellent. Give me thy hand. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I beat thee. Hey, and in this half hour, will he be asleep? Wilt thou destroy him then? I, on mine honor. This will I tell my master. Actors take 10 minutes and we'll move to the clothesline. We're going to do the clothesline and the dogs next. And Skip, yeah. we need to have different clothespins because these don't work. Okay. Technical rehearsals are the three days or so before you open your play. It's not an actor's time. They hate this time because the director is spending all their time with the lighting designer, the costume designer, the set designer, in making their work happen. This is their time. Okay, so the end of the scene, the dark. Okay, so if we stay dark, then that's better for them. Then stay dark and then go into a change. Theater magic, I think, has to do with taking very ordinary things and making extraordinary things happen with them. And for me, lighting is all about magic because you can't hold it you can't touch it. it it's, it's an energy that's created that you, you physically can't handle. Through the use of color or direction, it can be a hostile place or a friendly place or a hot place or a cold place or it can just be a magical place. In The Tempest, it's all about magic, Prospero's magic. He can delight and he can terrorize, and he can do it in a second. He can make the change happen for a second, so our, in a second. So our challenge became, how do we do that and make you in the audience feel the same thing? Yeah. Ariel tells Prospero about the plot to kill him, so he sends his magic dogs to scare his enemy. No! Live theater is very exciting. Though the production can be repeated again and again, it will never be the same. It's not canned, it's not frozen. So you have that sense of, of danger when something is live. I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Prospero learns that he has actually abused his power. So at the very end of the play, he gives up his power through, through the giving up of magic. And it's not, it's not necessarily a, a happy moment. It's, um, there's a bitterness there at the very end. It's something he has to do. Prospero lifts off the hood, off of the actress, and for the first time, the audience sees her face. At this point, she's liberated. She's no longer, she's Louise, and she gets to, to see the audience. I've been in a play, I've finished my job, I'm free, I've been the stage manager and the assistant to Prospero, and I'm going home. And she runs out of the audience. We showed that with all this magic that I pulled you into this world, that we as a team created and pulled you in was nothing more than sand. And in all that, you just went on an incredible journey. I think that's the beauty of theater. I think that's what's so wonderful.
I need to go to the dentist, big time. Say something. <laughs> That's it. Now I must go wash. <laughs> that was uh, live theater. This is television. <laughs> television is uh, no big deal. Television is a snap. Keep on thinking. Ah. Mm. Mm.